Hey there! Today we're diving into a classic movie from 1977, The Sentinel. This flick's got it all laugh, shocks, and even a few tearjerkers. Stick around because we've got some fascinating facts coming your way. Ever wonder if there's a scene in a movie that sticks with you long after the credits roll? Well, The Sentinel might just have that moment. What's yours? And when did you first catch this gem on screen? We're curious what's your most cherished memory or personal experience connected to this film. Share your stories and memories down below in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. So grab your popcorn and settle in, it's gonna be a wild ride. Let's get started. The Sentinel, released in 1977, boasts an ensemble cast featuring a mix of established stars and rising talents. Directed by Michael Winner, the film delivers a blend of horror and psychological elements, punctuated by moments of genuine terror. While some performances shine, others feel underutilized, contributing to a mixed bag of acting prowess. The narrative follows a young model named Christina Raines, portrayed by Christina Raines, as she searches for a new apartment in New York City. As she settles into her new home, she encounters a slew of eccentric neighbors and gradually uncovers dark secrets about the building and herself. The plot weaves together elements of Roman Catholicism, demonic forces, and conspiracy, building towards a climactic and unsettling finale. One standout performance comes from Burgess Meredith, who delivers a memorable turn as a quirky neighbor with a penchant for pets. Meredith injects a delightful blend of comedy and madness into his role, adding to the film's campy charm. Meanwhile, actors like Martin Balsam and Chris Sarandon deliver solid performances that enhance the movie's psychological tension. However, not all performances hit the mark. Some actors, such as Jose Fur, feel underused in their roles, while certain scenes featuring Beverly D'Angelo and Sylvia Miles veer into gratuitous territory, detracting from the overall experience. Director Michael Winner deserves credit for creating a tense atmosphere and delivering effective scares throughout the film. Scenes featuring John Carradine are particularly memorable, showcasing Winner's ability to build suspense and dread. Despite its flaws, The Sentinel remains a compelling watch for fans of psychological horror. Its eclectic cast and eerie atmosphere contribute to a unique viewing experience that's both entertaining and chilling. In conclusion, The Sentinel offers a mix of campy fun and genuine scares, anchored by a diverse cast and a suspenseful narrative. While not without its faults, it's a film that manages to leave a lasting impression on viewers, even decades after its release. In the 1977 movie The Sentinel, Eli Wallach, known for his role, was part of the Curtain Club during his time at the University of Texas, alongside future Texas Governor John Connolly. Meanwhile, Richard Dreyfuss earned recognition for his performance in three hotels at the Mark Taper Forum Theater in Los Angeles, California, receiving the 1996 Los Angeles Drama Critics Circle Award. Additionally, in the Blu-ray commentary, Jeffrey Convitz mentions a third book in the Sentinel series, exploring the necessity of the Sentinel on Earth despite numerous galaxies. Looking back, the author Jeffrey Convitz really wanted to pick someone unknown for the main role in the movie. He thought it would match the book better. But in the end, they went with Christopher Walken, who was already well known in acting circles. The whole cast was really top notch, with five actors who won Oscars and eight who got nominated. Each actor brought something special to their part, making the movie even better. Their talent made the story more interesting and memorable for viewers. This movie was a big deal in the film industry and will be remembered for a long time. It just shows how working together and telling a good story can make something special happen. In a timeless movie from the late 70s, Jerry Orbach showcased his acting talent, playing various memorable roles in the world of New York theater. Universal Studios, inspired by the success of the film Airport, decided to bring together a group of experienced and well-known actors to create this cinematic masterpiece. Directed by Michael Winner, there was a brief desire to imagine Christopher Walken in the lead male role and Beverly D'Angelo bringing her undeniable talent to the main female character. Such thoughts often accompany the making of great films where every decision contributes to the overall storytelling. The behind-the-scenes story of The Sentinel's production is now a part of film history, 
a tale crafted with meticulous efforts by those working off camera, captured on film for generations to enjoy. In a twist of fate, a sequel to the book The Sentinel emerged titled The Guardian. Interestingly, in 26, two movies named The Sentinel and The Guardian hit the screens, completely unrelated to The Sentinel from 1977, and featuring different plots set outside of New York with no supernatural elements. Christopher Walken made his mark by portraying King Philip of France in the stage production of The Lion in Winter at the Ambassador Theatre, New York City, back in 1966. John Carradine, nearing the end of his life, boasted about appearing in more movies than any other actor, surpassing Donald Crisp, an Oscar-winning actor. Carradine, with over 300 films under his belt, and Crisp, with at least 170 known films, are contenders for the title of the most prolific actor. Among contemporary actors, Christopher Lee, with over 200 films, falls short of Carradine's extensive filmography. In the world of entertainment, some individuals have left their mark in unexpected ways. One notable example is a collaboration between an actor and a science fiction writer that resulted in an alternate history novel. Another actor, despite facing health challenges, had to turn down a role in a film. Additionally, there's an actor who appeared in three movies nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. These stories add richness to the diverse fabric of The Sentinel. Persistence and determination are vital in achieving success, especially in Hollywood. One example is Richard Dreyfuss, who faced criticism from casting directors during his early acting days. Despite this, he kept going, even making a list of those who doubted him. In 1984, he won an award for his performance in a play, which was a big moment for his career. Another example is Ava Gardner, who was talented but faced challenges. Although she sang in her own voice for a movie, the studio still dubbed her singing in all her films, which she didn't like. Despite these obstacles, both Dreyfus and Gardner showed resilience and left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Their stories teach us the importance of never giving up on our dreams, no matter what obstacles we face. In a jazz band alongside actor Peter Weller, Jeff Goldblum performed in local clubs in Los Angeles, California. Their band, the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra, took its name from a friend of Jeff's mother from his childhood. Both actors also shared screen time in the cult film The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. John Carradine's biography is featured in the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives. The entry spans volume two, from 1986 to 1990, appearing on pages 165-167. This authoritative source provides insights into Carradine's life and career. During the filming of The Bribe in 1949, Ava Gardner and Robert Taylor engaged in a brief romantic affair. Their connection adds a layer of intrigue to the behind-the-scenes dynamics of the film. Christina Raines, under contract with Universal at the time, almost didn't get the leading role due to a female executive at Universal who was more interested in pushing other clients for parts and ignoring her. She was told this directly by Michael Winner, who went against the executive's wishes and cast her anyway. Christina later said this may not have been for the best, however, and as she didn't like Winner's maddening approach to directing, the actress says she cried every day on her way to work and admitted in a recent interview that she has never watched this film due to the treatment she received on the set. Academy Award winner John Williams was originally supposed to score the music. However, when Williams backed out to do a project by George Lucas, Michael Small was later supposed to be a replacement. Small eventually was unable to do the score which led to Golden Globe nominee Gil Millay, who composed a chilling score which blends the elements of Williams, Jerry Fielding, and James Horner. Eli Wallach, known for his role as the lead bandit Calvary in The Magnificent Seven, outlives six of the other seven stars. Despite being older than all of them, Robert Vaughn passed away on November 11, 2016. 